evening and a very warm welcome to the national news broadcast. We are coming to you live from New Kuparani's News Studios. I am Dilanjali Ananda. And I am Lakshit Adhirasinghe. We start off tonight by taking a quick look at the top stories. Sri Lanka's economy shows signs of stabilization, World Bank says. Prices of nine Satosa commodities reduce. A kilogram of big onion reduced by 55 rupees and imported egg is priced at 36 rupees. Government assures not to privatize any institution that relates to expressways. Order under the Value Added Tax Act passed by majority. Parliamentary session suspended for two and a half hours due to the absence of parliamentarians. Development Lotteries Board records the highest prize amount provided for public in 2023. Board achieves the highest revenue earnings last year. Cabinet grants approval to provide sanitary pads for 800,000 female students. Siri Lakapiri Aurudu Siri Rupavahini New Year Festival begins. Seven Iranian consul officers in Syria killed in Israeli attack. Now for those in other stories, in detail on your top story. World Bank says Sri Lanka's economy shows signs of stabilization. In its latest biannual update, the World Bank has indicated that the economy is projected to see moderate growth of 2.2% this year. However, the country still faces elevated poverty levels, according to the World Bank. The Sri Lanka Development Update under the theme Bridge to Recovery was released today. It is a companion piece to the South Asia Development Update which examines economic developments and prospects in the South Asian region. According to the Sri Lanka report, Sri Lanka has seen a declining inflation on the back of new fiscal policies and a current account surplus, buoyed by increased remittances and tourism. The report projects a modest pickup in growth of 2.5% in 2025 with a gradual increase in inflation. as underscored in our Sri Lanka development update entitled Bridge to Recovery. Over the past few years that Sri Lanka navigated through a series of unprecedented challenges, including a global pandemic as well as a se severe economic downturn. Despite these obstacles, the country has demonstrated a commendable spirit of perseverance and is now started showing a sign of stabilization and appears to be on its way to uh, the path to a recovery. That's where the, this report is titled Bridge to Recovery. Yes, the resilience of the Sri Lankans has been remarkably and truly stood out. The latest data shows that promising trend. The economy is contracting slow at a pace uh, of 2.3% in 2023 and witnessing easing inflation, dec declining uh, interest rate and uh, current account surplus for the first time showed in the uh, last 50 years. These uh, positive developments have been supported by a boost in remittances and uh, as well as the uh, resurgence in tourism. However, the journey is far from over. The poverty rates remained elevated and also recovery hinges upon maintaining stability and continuing uh, reforms to complete the stabilization and move more toward the path to our growth. First, see growth turned positive in uh, the second half of 23. So you can see here, this shows quarterly growth through at least most of 22 into 23, you can see the deep contraction. But in the latter half of 23, you can see some positive growth, some green shoots, largely driven by services, certain industries um, and food and beverage products uh, industry. However, that's the construction sector, which also dipped quite sharply during the, the crisis. That hasn't yet um, shown any signs of recovery. But just to summarize, so you can see 2023 decline or the contraction was about 2.3%, which is less than the deeper contraction in 2022 of about 7.3%. Another point um, to make is that external balances are improving. So just a, a first sort of data point to flag in terms of the significant rebound in tourism um, from initially the depths, well, obviously you can see the depths of COVID there, there was some rebound and through the economic crisis this, this fell again and this, it's certainly risen um, approaching pre-crisis levels. Together with um, increased remittances, uh, weaker imports and IFI flows from World Bank 
IMF ADB. You've, we see this current account surplus for the first time since about 1977. In this environment, Forex reserves are being rebuilt. So from the dip at the bottom there, middle of 22, around $300 million, one to two weeks of imports, grown to about $3 billion now, or about two months of imports. And with this enhanced liquidity, you see um, the rupee has appreciated, or did appreciate by 10.8% in 23, and we've seen that continued appreciation into this year. However, downside risks remain high, with especially these very limited buffers. The elections this year, and the potential we see or the concern we see around policy versal or policy fatigue, particularly around the reforms that have been, have been implemented. And the other one is obviously a, a prolonged and insufficiently, say, deep debt restructuring, which would be a, a significant drag on the economy. Lanka Satasa has reduced the prices of several essential commodities again. The new prices will come to into effect from today. Accordingly, a kilogram of Pakistani imported big onions has been reduced by 55 rupees and the new price is 495 rupees. The price of one kilogram of imported red onions has been reduced by 30 rupees and the new price is 290 rupees. A kilogram 194 rupees following a 16 rupee decline. The new price of a kilogram of Pakistani imported potatoes is at 195 rupees. 400 gram SLSL milk powder packet is at 925 rupees. A kilogram of imported flour has been reduced by 8 rupees and an imported egg price has been reduced by 7 rupees. Accordingly, the new price of imported flour is at 192 rupees, while an imported egg will be 36 rupees. A kilogram of local white kaklu rice has been reduced by 3 rupees. With a new price, at 192 rupees. Meanwhile, a kilogram of soya meat has been reduced by 2 rupees. Satasa chairman Pasandaya Pabewardhana during a media briefing today said that commodity prices will be further reduced during this festive season to provide some relief for the public. The president has directed officials to investigate and report challenges faced by Muslim schools in Colombo and to address those issues immediately. He instructed the officials during a meeting held at the Presidential Secretariat today. Key issues addressed include the shortage of teachers in adequate space and classrooms, difficulties in teaching Islam in Sinhala, absence of schools in Muslim-majority areas. Approximately 40,000 students receive education through the Sinhala medium and the meeting addressed the shortage of teachers proficient in teaching Islam in Sinhala. Principals and organization representatives highlighted a shortage of approximately 200 teachers in 19 Muslim schools in Colombo and stressed the importance of resolving the issue. Hence, President Vikramasinghe instructed the officials of the Ministry of Education to look into this matter and to come up with proposals to address this issue. Additionally, attention was also drawn to the lack of Muslim schools in certain areas of Colombo, leading to students' inability to engage in educational activities. President Vikramasinghe directed Urban Development Authority officials to explore options for relocating some schools to suitable land. The meeting delved into overcoming obstacles to donor-funded construction of new school buildings to address space shortages. The President also advised officials to initiate agriculture-related training programs for advanced-level past students. Participants in this meeting comprised Senior Advisor to the President on National Security and Chief of Presidential Staff Sagala Ratnayaka, Governor of the Western Province Air Marshal Roshan Gunatilaka, Secretary to the President Saman Ekanayaka and Minister Ali Sabri. The state Vesak festival is scheduled to be held from the 21st to the 27th of May, titled as the Vesak Week. The theme of this year's state Vesak festival is let's not look at what others have done and look at what we have done. The state Vesak festival will be held in Marthale district. The opening ceremony of the festival is scheduled to be held at the premises of Dharmaraja Pirivena in Marthale and the closing ceremony at Milavana Sri Sunandarama temple premises in Palepola. Accordingly, the Cabinet of Ministers approved the proposal presented by Minister Vidra Vikramanayake to implement the scheduled series of programs and to stop the slaughtering of animals and to close down meat shops and liquor stores on May 22nd, 23rd and 24th. 
The Temple of Tooth Relic expects to initiate a project which aims to establish a museum in Halepula Valawa to represent the great historical and the environmental background of the Kingdom of Kandy. The Cabinet of Ministers approved the proposal presented by a president to hand over the Halepula Valawa and the grounds to the Temple of the Tooth Relic through a title deed of sacred premises. Based on the recommendations of the Technical Evaluation Committee and the Standing Procurement Committee, the Cabinet of Ministers granted approval to the resolution furnished by Minister Nimasi Pala de Silva to award the contract of obtaining four wide-body aircrafts on monitoring lease facility as mentioned below, along with an additional aircraft. Cabinet of Ministers granted approval to the resolution furnished by Minister Susuprem Jayanth to implement a program to provide sanitary pads free of charge annually from April 2024 to 800,000 female students studying in most remote schools, remote schools, isolated schools, estate schools and in urban schools where poor fam female students are in. Cabinet of Ministers granted approval to the joint resolution furnished by the President and Minister Jeevan Thondaman to award freehold grants for 4,151 families living in the estates belong to regional estate companies and state-owned estate companies with immediate effect for the same lands those families are resided at present. Cabinet of Ministers approved the proposal furnished by Minister Harin Fernando to import 750 electric and hybrid vans with seating capacity of 6 to 15 and 250 buses with seating capacity from 16 to 30 which are small buses and larger buses with seating capacity of 30 to 45 for transportation of tourists without any special tax relief. In the meantime, Cabinet Spokesman Minister Bandula Gunavardhana says that any institution related to expressways will not be privatised. He made these remarks during the Cabinet briefing held today. Minister Bandula Gunavardhana said that the expressways have not been handed over to any private company. He said that the Sahatya Investment Company is a state-owned entity. He said that the Treasury and the Road Development Authority hold the ownership of the company. He said that the Road Development Authority is among the institutions which require to be restructured. Therefore, he pointed out the need to formulate technological and management strategies to overcome the debt challenges faced by these institutions. Responding to a query raised over the recent fuel price reduction of limited fuel products, the minister said that the gas prices have been reduced by 600 rupees in support of the general masses. He said that highway buses use super diesel of which the price was reduced. He said that a price formula has been introduced to mitigate the issues persisted for a long period of time. He said that the new prices are being determined based on the world fuel prices. The order under the Value Added Tax Act passed by majority vote in the parliament. Accordingly, 55 votes were cast in favour of the order, while 19 votes against. Meanwhile, the Bank's Amendment Bill and the orders of the Colombo Port City Economic Commission Act were passed in the Parliament without amendments. In the meantime, parliamentary session suspended for two and a half hours due to the absence of parliamentarians. Speaker Mahindaya Pabewadhana announced to the Parliament today that he endorsed the certificate on several bills yesterday which were passed in the Parliament in recent past. Speaker has endorsed a certification on the bills titled Secured Transaction, Registration of Documents Amendment, Trust Receipts Amendment, Mortgage Amendment, Finance Leasing Amendment, Inland Trust Receipts Amendment and Companies Amendment. The Development Lottery Board has been able to extend a record price amount of 13.4 billion rupees for its consumers in 2023. The Development Lotteries Board also recorded the highest revenue in its history during the last year. State Minister Shehan Sema Singh said that the funds disbursed as prize money have exceeded 13.4 billion rupees. Also, he said that the board has increased its contribution to the government by 5.19 billion rupees. He added that the board has contributed 3.6 billion rupees to the president's fund with its profit at entirety. Chairman of the Development Lotteries Board Ajit Naragala said that they surpassed the 3 billion rupee mark in 2022. However, he said that they managed to surpass that limit and reach an annual profit of 3.6 billion rupees. He said that they also managed to extend a record price amount of 13.4 billion rupees for its consumers in 2023. 
Additional Secretary to the President Sarat Kumar said that the President's fund is predominantly utilized for education and health. In the last three months, he said that all medical aid provided through the fund will be increased from 50% to 100% with special attention to children's hospitals. He said that they now extend assistance for 75 illnesses compared to the previous 30. Accordingly, he appreciated the support extended by the Development Lotteries Board to the President's Fund. The national television is ready to celebrate the Sri Lakapiri Aurudu Siri New Year celebrations in a grand scale. Its opening ceremony was held at the national television premises today. The Siri Lakapiri Aurudu Siri Rupavahini New Year celebrations will telecast live on tele national television on both 13th and 14th of April. New Year rituals and customs will telecast live from 2 p.m. on the 13th to 1 a.m. on the 14th. The New Year Festival will be held at the Soma Virachandrasiri grounds in Piliandala from 7.30 a.m. onward on the 14th of April. Sponsors of Sri Lanka Piri Aurudu Siri New Year celebrations handed over their checks to Sri Lanka Rupani Corporation today. The checks were received by Chairman of the Corporation, Dr. Prasad Samrasinghe. Sampad Bank, Ceylon Biscuits Limited, Vijay Group of Companies, Lanka Soy, Swaba Ceylon, SHS Group of Companies, Nestle Lanka and Ceylon Agro have come on board to sponsor this year's edition of the New Year Festival. Lake House will be the media sponsor while Casbell Urban Council and the Division Secretariat have extended their support for the festival. <laughs> The crown presented for the Rupavahini Aurudu Kumaria was exhibited in line with the inauguration ceremony. Executives of national television were present on this occasion. In other local stories, several health trade unions launched a strike today, inconveniencing many patients who visited hospitals for treatment. The general public showed strong opposition against trade unions at several hospitals, which are engaged in the strike action. Accordingly, 72 health trade unions have joined the strike action, targeting several demands including salary increments. Even though the strike was also launched at the Colombo National Hospital, a group of physicians and nurses engaged in their usual duties. The clinic at the Hingura Goda Base Hospital was not conducted today due to the strike. This caused a severe inconvenience to the patients who had visited the hospital for treatment. Meanwhile, the nursing staff attached to the Hingura Guda Hospital engaged in a silent protest at the hospital premises. The reconstruction of the Sirisumana Road in Uggalapaduka was commenced today. The reconstruction of the road will be carried out at a cost of 34.5 million rupees. Accordingly, 1.5 km distance of the Uggala Paduka Road is expected to be redeveloped. Minister Bandalaguna Vardhana and State Minister Sivanes Thurai, Chandrakanthan were present at the commencement of the road development. Sundar Nuarelia Salalihini Vasantya will be held until the 25th of April. Various entertainment programs have been organized in many parts of Nuarelia, including the Gregory Lake for those who visit the city during this festive season. National Television invites the public to visit Nuarelia during this season and experience the Salalihini Vasantya festivities and the beauty of the Victoria Park in this wanderlust. And we have mornings from home in brief. 
The Colombo High Court today rejected the bail application filed by Venerable Galagodati and Yana Salatera. He was handed a four-year rigorous imprisonment for the defamatory comments made in a manner causing disharmony among religions. Saplings were handed over to the Speaker and the Parliamentary Office Bearers to plant saplings for the National New Year tradition uh, to plant saplings. The saplings were distributed by Minister Mahinda Maravira. Utilization of latest technology to uncover erased inscriptions in the largest stone inscription found in historic Vimulagala mountain top. Initially, the researchers were only able to uncover 40% of the information engraved in the stone inscription. Therefore, senior lecturer of the Postgraduate Institute of Archaeology, Arjun Ratnathlaka, said that steps were taken to use the latest technology in this regard. Sri Lanka Customs has gained revenue close to 350 billion rupees in the first quarter of this year. Customs Media spokesman Sivali Arugut has said that the revenue gained is equivalent to the funds expected from the customs by the government. Customs Media spokesman Sivali Arugut has said that Sri Lanka Customs has collected close to 350 billion rupees in revenue in the first quarter of this year, which is equivalent to the funds expected from the customs by the government. He said that they managed to reach this target with new reforms introduced within the customs department. He said that with the government's decision to re-import several items which were suspended last year contributed to this achievement. He said that increasing the VAT up to 18% also contributed to the increased revenues. A foreign tourist who had visited the Sigiriya area to experience the sunrise has been admitted to Damala Base Hospital after being struck by a wild elephant. The hospital has indicated that the tourist is in a critical condition. The foreign tourist has met with his accident while walking towards the Sigiriya rock along with her husband. The Canadian national was critically injured from the incident and she was admitted to the hospital by a tour guide. A woman had also been killed after being struck by a wild elephant in the same area in a previous occasion. Various stakeholders continue to allege the responsible parties for failing to take appropriate action against these incidents. That's all the news we have from home. Stay tuned for the stories coming up next. <laughs>
And in sports news today is the fourth day of the second test between Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. At the close of the day, for Bangladesh was at 268 runs for the loss of seven wickets in their second innings. Bangladesh need only 243 runs to win the match. The match is underway at the Chattagram, Bangladesh. At the start of the play, Sri Lanka was 102 runs for the loss of six wickets. Angela Matthews managed to score his 41st half-century by scoring 56 runs. Sri Lanka decided to declare their second innings for the score of 157 runs for the loss of seven wickets, giving Bangladesh a target of 511 runs. Bangladesh lost their first three wickets under 100 runs. However, Monimul Haik scored a half century to stabilize the Bangladesh innings along with Shakib Al Hazan, Lahiru Kumar, Prabhat Jai Surya and Kamindu Mendes have taken two wickets each for Sri Lanka. In the first innings, Sri Lanka scored 531 runs while Bangladesh scored 178 runs in their first innings. Started scoring quickly, trying to find a way and that's how they got the break through the ball, probably catching the field around. Kamindu Mendes getting the breakthrough thoughts from him and uh, an appeal big one and uh, that was till the end of the day's play there was a flourish right at the end from the back of media weightlifter dilanka isuru kumar placed fifth in the 55 kilogram weight class at the world weightlifting championship taking place in thailand three sri lankan weightlifters are taking part in this tournament you know, Dilanka managed to record 112 kilograms in snatch while recorded 135 kilograms in clean and jerk. Accordingly, he lifted 247 kilograms in total weight, placing him in the fifth position of the A category in the representative weight class. This is taking place as a tournament to select weightlifters for the Paris Olympics this year. It's pretty easy clean. Steps forward though. Oh, nice jerk. And that's all the news we have for tonight. Join us tomorrow at the same time for the very latest on Channel I. I'm Delangeli together with Lakshita signing off. Good night.